Okay, I found my spot. The big question is whether I'm gonna to try to shovel down to the ground or just pat it down and uh, put the tent in this area. Snow's nice and light, so I'm gonna give shoveling a try. But I'm putting up my big tent. This is gonna be a place that I'm gonna be at for a while. So I'm gonna make a few trips, have it well stocked. So it's worth putting the effort in now to get it comfortable. I do prefer to have the floor in but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Standing on the ground here, the snow's up at mid thigh. So there we go. Thanks, Goat. Trust me, it'll be warmer when it's done. Okay, so I've just cleared the space for the ground tarp. The canvas part zips into this ground sheet. This is a five meter bell tent. I get asked all the time about my tents and now I'm going to uh, stake, stake things in as best I can. Hopefully they grab. If they don't, uh, I'll have to uh, figure out what I'm gonna do. And then I'll zip in the canvas, put it in the center pole, get the stove in there and start a fire. I'm, uh, I'm pretty zonked. That's a lot of work uh, clearing this much snow. I don't know. Oh, 
This tent has two doors and there's uh, metal bars that keep this one open and the back one open. I lost my two. Scout's been in this tent lots of times. Oh boy. The beer is gonna taste good tonight. I don't know if you can see this. I went around and I walked on basically on top of the tent. And I threw the guy lines on top of the snow because I have to, there's no way I can dig to the bottom, but I have long enough stakes where I just been throwing me into the snow and packing him down with my snowshoes. And it's getting a pretty solid uh, connection there. So that's what I'm doing. And these are the last ones I gotta do. Well, it's 6.30. I finally got all my stuff transported from my truck to the tent. It's taken me much longer than I anticipated. And I'm starving. Beyond starving. In case you're wondering what I put in there, it's a, uh, it's just a um, charcoal barbecue lighter that you use to uh, get to charcoal going. Weber makes it, but it works great. It's the best fire stirrer you can ever use. I'll probably be going to sleep very soon, so I'll give you a tour in the morning, and that'll be it for tonight. I'm going to bed. So good morning, this is the setup. I got a fire going. Generally never lasts throughout the night. I can't, uh, I've never been able to do it anyways without it being so hot in here that it's uncomfortable when you go to bed, right? And I go to bed early on these trips because I'm exhausted. So the goal is to stock up uh, with firewood so I don't have to uh, keep doing this. It's uh, it's only, you know, 9.30 this morning. So, um, you know, if I get uh, a good stock of firewood, I'll feel better. And then I want to make a nice soup, a ham hock split pea soup uh, over the stove. And I can let that simmer and, and that should be a, a nice uh, tasty dinner for uh, a nice hot tent. Let's go. Let's go.
I just stole some coals out of the stove, throw them on there, instant fire. Well, I've never used a frozen onion to cook with before, so I don't think it's going to be great, but we'll see. Boil some water for some chicken stock. All right, so for the split pea soup, first we gotta put some broth in here. Put one, oh, this is a big one too. So one smoked, one smoked ham hock. It's gonna go in there. We're gonna bring this to a boil. 
Go put some more water in there. Put some split peas, but a cup. A little bit of time. Well, I'm actually ahead of schedule for a change. It's like three o'clock. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is bring this to a boil and it should simmer for about an hour, hour and a half. And that ham hock is just gonna really be no nice and tender. So when it's done, I take that out, pull all the, strip all the ham from the ham hock, put it back in, put some fresh frozen, well, frozen peas in there and uh, some Dijon mustard and wait till you see it, it's gonna be awesome. Oh. Snow on there. Okay, got two fires going, stove is going good. The uh, fire I got going here with my split pea soup is going well. The wood that I cut, it was, uh, you know, obviously a dead tree, but it's still not seasoned, right? So it is a little trickier keeping the fires going with uh, kind of green wood, basically. I mean, like I said, it, the trees were dead, obviously, if you saw them. But here now there we got some good fires going. Scout is had her dinner and she's chilling on her uh, mat. Yeah, I mean there was a ton of work to get this set up. But once you do, you got to be here for a long time. Like I'm I'm living out here for a while and it's been enjoyable. A lot of work to set up, but once you get it set up, man, it's really comfortable. Cutting some wood to keep the fires going. You know, and my snowshoes to get through this gorgeous landscape like 3 feet of snow everywhere. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Tomorrow Scout and I are going to venture off even further, as if this isn't far enough, to a cliff that has a beautiful lookout. So we're going to set up my small tent there and spend the night and uh, just enjoy the amazing uh, scenery and I think it's calling for more snow. There's no shortage of that. So I really got a good bed of coals going now, so now I have to kind of move the pot off to the side when it gets too warm. But there's worse problems to have. Very nice. So there's not a lot of meat on that ham hock. I know it might look a little too big for what I got going on there. But I'm going to take it out, shred all the meat off and put it back in the soup. And then add some, like I said, some peas and some mustard. It'll get thick. It's, uh, it's going to be really good. Okay, that should be done for being outside. Pots on the, uh, the pots on the wood stove. It has legs on it, which I'm sure has a purpose, but it would actually work better if it didn't have the legs for me, because I could actually cook on the wood stove with it. It doesn't get hot enough because the legs kind of keep it a good inch and a half away from the surface of the wood stove. But for what I want, just keeping it warm, it'll uh, it'll do for tonight. Okay. 
more so it's good. What's nice about this is I can let it cool off and I can warm it up. There's lots here. So when I'm out with Scout exploring and I want to come back and cook, I just heat it up. I got a great hearty meal. Let that simmer for a little bit. So for all the meals I made on YouTube, I think this one turned out the best. And the best part of this I was able to share with Scout. There's a lot of fat on the ham hock. So I uh, gave her quite a bit of that. She's got a full belly now. She's curled up on her blanket and uh, I'm enjoying this, it's so good. So here's my soup from last night. I'm going to take a small batch so that when I get there and get set up, I can throw that on the stove and that'll warm up and that'll give me lots of energy and warm me up so I can continue to film for you guys. The nice thing is I got my snowshoes off on a trail that's obviously been used by snowmobiles. So it's packed down a little bit, which is nice. 
eventually I'll have to get off it and put my snowshoes back on. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, should have took the snow pants off. I still might do that. It's a little warm. Of course, scouts far ahead of me. Don't get too close, Scout. Don't get too close. Well, I think it was worth it. Whew, what do you think, Scout? What do you think, huh? That's pretty awesome. Okay. This is camp for the night. I think it was worth the hike. I didn't bring a shovel. I am not shoveling. I'm gonna pat this down with my snowshoes, get a firm base, and then set the, set the tent up. I don't really know what's under here, but uh, I want to have a nice view of that. Yeah, very cool. Add some of this stuff. I have used, can always use my snowshoes as a shovel if I need to level it out. I might take some, uh, take a little construction work going on here. So I have my three meter bell tent which is nice and small, perfect for me and Scout and stove. There's lots of firewood around here, that's not going to be an issue. It's amazing, even with snowshoes, how you can just fall so far down in the snow. I want to get this too close to the edge. I do not want to go. Get that. That's about the limit. And it's all, all down here from there. That's about level two. This really gets low, so where the camera is is probably where I'm gonna put my tent, nice high spot. This dips down way too low. I'm gonna be able to have a decent night's sleep. Yeah. To get a tent going on the stove, I know, the scout's gonna get cold, so I get her, her pad set up and everything else, and um, that should be good. Roll around there, Scar. Well, I've been walking around here for a while. There's no way the snow's getting any more packed. So, I think I can walk on it with my boots and set the tent up. Scout a nice place to stay warm. And we gotta get some firewood. An absolute dream campsite. Again, I did this in the first trip, so there's my stove. A bag with some sleeping bags and stuff in it. Those are the gloves I was wearing. So, time to get that set up. Get these snowshoes off. They'll sink in. What you gonna do? Oop. Seriously, I spent 15 minutes walking on this. It's still sinking into it. Oh, well, if you've been watching my channel, 
the last video I made with my three meter tent was basically how I was done with canvas tents. And uh, I'll get into it in a bit, but uh, basically this had ripped. And uh, I had left it up and it's a long story. If you want to watch the video, I'll put a link there. But this is it, it's back. I fixed it myself. I sewed, uh, I sewed it um, good as new. And that's what I'll be using on this trip. Just thought it kind of required a, uh, hey, guess who's back sort of moment. Um, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I want to put the floor down. I just think it'll be easier on a scout. And I think it might take away from the uh, kind of post hole issue I've got going on with the snow here. So I don't know whether it's right or wrong. We'll see, I guess. And again, I like having the floor down because it gives me a kind of a guideline where it's going to get set up at. And this is the same as my big tent. The canvas just zips into it. Oh, it's going to require some more snowshoes, I think. So with my bigger tent, I was able to dig down to the bottom and get to solid ground where I could put the steel stakes in to guy out the uh, the lines for the tent. There's so much snow here, I'm not going to do that tonight, so I'm just going to break off and cut off some, uh, some long limbs and use those as stakes and they'll just go into the snow and that'll be enough support. It's a small tent. Oh, the snow is going to fall down on myself. There's so much snow, I'm still sinking a little bit. I've tried to pack it down as much as I can. I keep waving this sticker around, I'm tormenting Scout. She's been trying to chew on it. But I need it for, I need it for the, especially right, the stove's gonna be right here, should be fine. I do wish it was a little firmer. There's a million sticks, go, chew, go find another one. The ironic thing about these sticks, stop it, is that it's gotta be thin enough to go through the eyelet, but yet strong enough that you want it to, to actually go deep enough into the ground. And these uh, spruce trees have these little strong little branches come out of them. And <laughs> to hit them with an ax, you gotta hit them hard enough and sometimes these break. It's way more difficult than it really needs to be, but it's just time consuming. Tighten this up a little bit. So this is the area here that I'm most concerned about. Snow is very deep. It's pulling up my peg, but if I, if I pull this one back, it should be good. So the bottom ones have a metal D-ring, so you can only get certain size stick through it. But the guidelines, I can just use the big stick, so. And I can pack snow on it later too, which will help. Whew. Okay, got some work to do still. So for this one here, I can't shorten it up enough. I need the stick to be about right here. I wrap this around the stick. This would be the end I'm going to use, but I'm going to loop it through here. Pull that through. Watch out, scatter you in the way. Scatter over here. And there we go. So now I've just kind of basically doubled it up. I'm going to move the stick a little bit. There we go.
So the tent is as set up as it's going to be. It's set up pretty solid from the other guidelines. So now I'm going to take these snowshoes off, get our air mattresses set up, and give place the scouts to lie down while I'm doing other stuff. So this is the scout's pad. What I do is I just, I don't inflate it like I normally would if I was lying on it. So I fold it in half, stay there. And then I have a rectangular sleeping bag. I'll just tuck it into. And this can, this can kind of go basically underneath it as extra insulation. Scatter, there you go, right there. Good girl, good girl. So, nice and cozy. So I actually lied, where I had scout originally, that's where the stove's gonna be. So she's going to be there, and I'm gonna be, my pad will be over that way, and the stove will be there. So speaking of the stove, that's what I'm gonna put in next. So I really wasn't planning on using this tent again. But I did sew it. I repaired it myself. I bought one of those owls or owls, whatever the term is. I'll show you. Uh, I think I have it at home. So yeah, I sewed it myself and it's worked great. And I couldn't pass up the opportunity to use it to, in a location like this. So. Get more holes in it every trip. It's a good chair though. I'm happy to report that my hockey tape held up. My split pea soup is still in the container. So I'm gonna heat that up over the stove for dinner. The scout's got some chicken. Oh, and Scout never leaves me. So she's always, she's in uh, on her bed right now there, wrapped up. I'm gonna heat it up for there. That's gonna simmer. And that's gonna be dinner. Oh, it smells so good. That is the best split pea soup you're ever going to have.
So what a treat to wake up to this, huh? It actually wasn't snowing all night. It just started snowing uh, early this morning. And it just goes to show you how much snow can come down here. It was coming down pretty good earlier. I debated to get the camera out, but uh, I thought better of it. It slowed down a little bit here, but I got the drone up and show you some amazing footage of, of where I am and the scenery around here, it's just gorgeous. Maybe three slices. Hopefully I can get three slices in that fry pan. Save a little bit for later. That's apple right there on top. Mmm. Probably only gonna get two in there. On the edge in a small canvas tent with my dog. Not a bad way to go. Not, not bad, not bad at all. Whew, apple cinnamon French toast. It was right on there. Look at that, eh? Okay. We're gonna eat this breakfast and take a little bit of rest and we're gonna have to pack up. Well, I've been gone for just over 24 hours, and this is how much snow we've gotten. Luckily, the tent uh, didn't collapse on me. You can see the, the heavy weight of the snow on it. So, it's good to be back. We're going to uh, get everything back and organized, our sleeping gear and everything else put back in place. Stay tuned.
Hello everyone. I just got back from less than well less than two days away from the tent here. And you can see how much snow we got just in that short period of time. And it's still coming down. It warmed up so it's almost like a like a freezing rain, but it's still snowing out there. So I thought I would take this opportunity to show you my setup for my tent that I've been living in for a while. And uh, I figured I'd go over it and uh, show you what works for me. And if you've got any questions, whatever, I really encourage you to ask. These are gaiters that keep the snow out of the tops of my boots in deep snow. And uh, I'm in central Ontario, Canada. And I've been living in this tent for a while now doing some adventures uh, kind of here there and everywhere but this has been home base for a while and it's really worked been really happy with it so I'll give you a quick tour of the whole thing and all my gear and how it's uh, it's really a really comfortable setup and of course scouts curled up on my cot I'll show you how her and I sleep so yeah so this is this section of the tent there's a, a water jug that I keep next to the stove so that it stays, you can hear it, there's ice in there and I, you know, it doesn't take long to freeze when we were gone for the, you know, almost two days. Obviously a lot of ice built up in here. So uh, I try to keep it next to the stove. This is a, this is a folding chair. It doesn't look fancy, but it's very comfortable. So I like using this. Back here is Scout's food, her water, her, um, that green bag's got all her dry food in it. So that is Scout curled up on my cot, that's where I sleep. So when it's time for bed, this is Scout's bed right here. And what this is, is a air mattress um, folded in half, so I don't inflate it all the way. So it's folded in half and it's tucked in a rectangular sleeping bag. So she curls up in here. And I wrapped her up in my coat and my down coat and uh, blankets and stuff and she, seems to always uh, shake it off. So I think she's good just curled up in here unless it gets really, really cold, like five in the morning. But for the most part, this is where she sleeps. So I just pull it out, but it stays out of the way. Tucked back in there. And she likes to curl up here anyways. I mean, space is a premium. And yeah, here we go. The heart of the tent is my uh, stove. It's a Camp Chef cylinder stove. I'm not sure exactly the name. Of course, you gotta have some wool socks drying next to it. I try to keep my leather gloves drying. Had a pair of gloves drying next to it. It's a great stove. I've been using it for a while now. It's nice to cook on top. Highly recommend it. My other stove I use for my uh, that silver stove I, I'm not really fond of, but this one here is uh, it's excellent for cooking on and just very practical. So, oh, well, it's a bright light, but I have an LED light up there that I have basically just kind of tied onto the pole and that runs the Jackery. But what I love about that is it only draws about 45 watts an hour, so it's very energy efficient. And all my wet clothes, jackets, snow pants, all that sort of stuff. Anything that's wet gets hung up in the center pole. So that's my setup. This is a five meter bell canvas tent with a uh, vinyl floor. The center pole, real sturdy. Tent holds up really well. I've uh, had this tent for years. It, um, I've left it out. I've, I wouldn't say I've abused my tent, but I've, um, I've kind of put them to the limits. And the worst thing that's ever happened to this tent is if you're not in it regularly, the snow can build up and the, the front support one time uh, did give way because of the weight of the snow because the problem with these tents is that um, you know you got the stove going in here it gets warm so the canvas is warm and the snow uh, sometimes the snow freezes to it and it collects has a tendency to collect when it's super cold the uh, snow just kind of flakes off it and it falls down to the side which is great but you get into trouble when it warms up a little bit and it gets wet freezes gets wet freezes and then the snow starts to accumulate on it and uh, you can't really give it that just tap to clear it off. It's got two doors too, by the way. But I just like having my bed against the back door and this door here is the front door. Overall, I think it's a pretty good setup. I've been really comfortable out here and it could be comfortable here for a very long extended period of time if I want to. So it's a great inexpensive way to get out in the backcountry 
all year long. I've been uh, using this tent now in all seasons and it's held up really well. The zippers, uh, you know, zip tight for bugs in the summer and it holds the heat in as good as a tent can in the winter. It's been down to minus 20. It's going to get down to minus 20 tonight. The weather's been a little crazy. We had a lot of snow, as you can tell, but it's been fun. So anyways, I just thought I'd make a quick video and show you my setup. Hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already done, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that even more. Cheers. We got another one in the books.